Are you for real? It's the story that will change the course of football history forever. No comment. The book that nobody can put down. Will premierships be stripped? There were rules in place, mm -hmm. so you play to the rules of the day. No, I've had enough of this. Fletcher. No, I've had enough of this. Come on. We won them. We did win. We won them fair and square. A story that no footy fan can afford to miss. Jack Hutchison lives in the basement at his mum's house, but there's more to the man than meets the eye. He also happens to be author of the controversial book, The Premiership's a Fake Walk. In his book, he makes bold claims that just about every flag won in the history of VFL-AFL is phony, and has uncovered some uncomfortable truths about the Collingwood Football Club. You claim the Magpies haven't tasted success on the last Saturday in September for over 60 years now. Well, yeah, that's factually correct, um, Dill. Uh, they haven't won in the last Saturday since uh, 1958, in fact. Dill McKenzie. I caught up with Collingwood legend Tony Shaw to see if this was true. In 1990 and 2010, we played in October. They were October grand finals, do they count? Uh, no, not in my book. Mm. Asterix. So you, Tony Shaw, a legend of the Collingwood Football Club, a premiership captain, a Norm Smith medalist, a former coach, is confirming to me that Collingwood has not won a grand final on the last Saturday in September for over 60 years. We had to play in October. But not on, but not on the last Saturday in September. Are your ears painted on? I'm, I'm telling you, if it was played in September, we would have played in September. I'm just but quoting. I'm just quoting what the book says, Mr. Shaw. Yeah, well, I, I don't. I don't care. Just confirming. Last Saturday in September, Collingwood still hasn't won a won a, won a flag. Well, is this bloke for real? It's for real, and the asterisk flags keep on coming. The history books have Collingwood being the only club to have won four flags in a row. They were known as the Machine. However, according to author Jack Hutchison, it's all a scam. So back then we used the Argus final system, which essentially meant if you were the minor premierships for the year, you had the right to challenge if you lost in the semi, prelim, or even the grand final, mm -hmm. you could ask for a rematch, simple as that. Right. And so Collingwood actually did this in 1929. Mm -hmm. They lost the semi-final to Richmond. Mm -hmm. Tigers then went on to beat Carlton in the prelim. Collingwood, oh, we'll have a rematch, thanks. They won a flag. He yeah. claims that it's, they only won two in a row because two of those other premierships had a challenge rule where Collingwood could challenge a team for a grand final. You play to the rules of the day. Right. And if you don't play the rules of the day, the only way, other way to win is to probably cheat. And that's why we had four in a row. Never to be done, hasn't been done ever again in the history of the game. But you only won two in a row without asking for an extra game. And they did it again in their, their fourth final. They actually lost the grand final to Geelong in 1930 and just said, oh, no, nah, let's run it back, guys. We'll have another kick. Mm -hmm. Go on to win their fourth straight. Uh, or in my book, their second straight asterisk. And while Hutchison's claims seem valid that the Pies should have an asterisk on their four in a row, or should we say fraud in a row, there's more and more questionable premierships, and they've been uncovered by our own research. Back in 1924, the VFL introduced a round-robin final system, with the premiership going to the team that had the highest percentage. That team happened to be Essendon, despite losing the last game of the year. There was no grand final. Dustin Fletcher was a premiership player back in 1924. Dustin Fletcher, can you tell me who won the 1924 grand final? Yeah, it was a big, big win by the Bombers. Um, obviously, uh, it's our reunion coming up. It was my second year. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable premiership that one was, I tell you. So you're arguing for Collingwood to have premierships stripped on them based on systems that no longer exist. Yes. Anymore. Yes. But we don't have a round robin system that only lasted one season and that premiership should still stand. That premiership in my book is probably the most legitimate one in AFL history. Dustin, I put it to you that you didn't win the 1924 grand final. Yeah, as I said, it was my, my second year. We've got um, actually our reunion coming up. Despite all the evidence put in front of the Essendon Games record holder, he wouldn't budge and took the claims of their 1924 flag being bogus personally. Mr Fletcher, did Essendon fluke a flag that year? 
I've got no other questions oh, to come ask. On, Mr. I reckon um, this is nearly Dustin, come on. No, nah, this is nearly done. Come on, mate. This is nearly done. No, nah, come on, mate. You're better than this. Bombers, unbelievable season. No need for a walkout, mate. The research is clear. This sweet, innocent and humble football club was screwed of a premiership almost 100 years ago. And now club legends are demanding justice. Richmond legend Dale Waitman believes the Tigers should be retrospectively awarded the flags from 1924 and 1929. He contacted us directly after the book was released. In what was a comprehensive and detailed chat, the flea didn't hold back. Um, have you read the book? No, I haven't. I right. Did, I didn't. Nah. You haven't read the book? Um, and play the MCG. Why? Oh, but it's not just authors, pundits and punters making wild and petty accusations of phony flags. Even more jaded ex-players are coming out of the woodwork with their conspiracies of how they've been wronged over the years. Instead of playing our prelim final, which we earned at the Gabba, that's our home. No, 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 he makes us go all the way down the MCG. Deserve the four in a row. Home final. No, we're going to play the MCG because we've got one final every week at the MCG. We would have won four in a row, been the best team ever, as we were. So you're saying you're like the English cricket team, you're the moral premiers of the 2004 season? The English team are irrelevant. They suck about everything. They're always crying. It appeared it was a case of it takes one to no one when it comes to Acker's whinging about the 2004 Grand Final. No one from AFL House was willing to make a comment on the allegations made in the book. However, they did release a statement saying, the league would never make an ad hoc decision or change a rule on a whim just because it might make us look bad. It appeared as though everyone had their own agenda on this vexed and divisive issue. Who do you barrack for? Uh, mate, I'm impartial. This is, I take my job impartial. seriously. I'm partial. Right. Yeah. No one. So why do I see an Essendon scarf and hat <sighs> in your bookshelf and why are you wearing Essendon socks? Our own investigations and reasonings turned out that all but a few premierships, one in the entire history of the game, has turned out to be illegitimate. Perhaps, as the book title suggests, just about every premiership is a fake walk.